My name is Lloyd Maxwell. I'm one of the ten grandchildren of Elmer Woodard Boyd. Grandpa Boyd was born May 10, 1876. He came to Texas from Banner, Mississippi with his widowed mother and three, children, three siblings in the late 1880s. After several moves, they settled in southeast Texas. Grandpa told a friend, when I crossed that big river, the Mississippi, going to Texas, I prayed the Lord would let me be a cowboy. When people see this old film made in 1939 of the cattle drive from Cottonwood Ranch to Bolivar, it should be evident his prayer was answered. Grandpa Boyd always wanted some land of his own. So in 1908, he bought his first section of land, 640 acres, for $8.12.5 per acre. This was the beginning of his dream. From that small start came the spark that he eventually led to his owning and operating over years around 100,000 acres of land in Jefferson, Liberty, Chambers, and Galveston County. On the first section of land he bought, Grandpa and Grandmother Boyd built their home, raised their children, and made it their headquarters near Fanette, Texas on Boyd Road. He has another headquarters, Cottonwood Ranch, southeast of Devers, about 10 miles. Cottonwood is the point of origin of all his cattle drives. He also has a headquarters on Bolivar Peninsula with a ranch house and big cattle pens near Boyd Road. Grandpa and Grandmother Boyd had four children, Elmer Vernon Pat Boyd, born 1906, Cecil Kenneth Boyd, born 1908, my mother, Isla Boyd Maxwell, and my aunt, Aunt Lee Isla Boyd Jeffrey, identical twins, were born 1910. This is the 1939 cattle drive from Cottonwood to Bolivar. But before any big cattle drive can be started, a large herd must be assembled from several different pastures into a central location, or a trap, it's in cowboy lingo. This may take three or four days. To drive thousands of cattle to White's Ranch from, Bol from Cottonwood takes a full day, about 18 to 20 miles. The cow crew must be prepared to leave before or at dawn. After a long first day drive, they arrived at White's Ranch before dark and drove the herd into a large trap or pasture, and there they co-mingled the two herds. The second day drive leaves White's Ranch at daylight and on to Highway 124, headed south towards High Island. The film begins a few miles south of White's Ranch on Highway 124 on their approach to the Intercoastal Canal Bridge. The next scene is of the cattle crossing the bridge. The photographer, Luther Owens, was on the railroad bridge east of the highway bridge, filming the cattle crossing the bridge. After the cattle had crossed the bridge, several people were pictured on the south entrance to the bridge. The only person I recognized was the lady on the left. She is my Aunt Tressa Boyd, wife of Uncle Cecil K. Boyd. The next scene was of the herd being driven along the Gulf Beach near High Island towards Galveston, Gilchrist. The cowboys in front of the herd are followed by about 20 horses, a remuda. These horses are to be used to work cattle all the winter at Bolivar. The, the cattle herd was stopped on the beach between High Island and Gilchrist to overnight. The lead cowboy shown as the herd was stopped was my Uncle Cecil K. Boyd, and behind Uncle Cecil's on horseback to the left was Randolph Club. The herd was driven the next day through Gilchrist to Flake, where the cattle pens and pastures were located. That's about eight to 10 miles. Uncle Cecil told me the herd size averaged between 6,000 and 8,000 over the years and sometimes up to 10,000. Grandpa has assembled a crew that has driven herds of thousands of cattle for many years. These men were responsible for the great success of the cattle drives that made history in Southeast Texas. When they left Cottonwood for White's Ranch, they were well prepared for any occasion due to their experience. They are the best in Texas. I want to acknowledge the names of many of these men, 
the very best anywhere. They are Randolph Club, Owen Club, Ruby Shishan, Jim Ritchie, Will Boyd, Tudum Sullivan, Charlie Blake, Johnny Remkes, Forrest Fox Fowler, Buck Eccles, Gooney Mays, Gaddy Harmon, Vernon Frije, L.P. Whittington, Floyd Frank, Top Gantz, and Howard Staten. Our family wants to thank Marie Hughes and the Wallaceville Museum for her incredible work in the presenting and preserving this important true history of Southeast Texas.